I've been travelling around the country to leave constituencies to ask people why they voted to leave and one of the issues that's been coming up several times is the whole question about British identity and what it means to be British. I wanted to get another angle on that so I arranged to meet the photographer Martin Parr who's been documenting life in Britain for over 40 years. So you've been documenting really British life, English life over decades. Mm -hmm. Do you think the divisions now are greater than you've seen before? You know, I wish I could say no, but I'm afraid I'll have to say yes. And of course, uh, the, the whole Brexit question has become so poisonous. It's all so uncertain and so difficult. Mm. So uh, the only thing that's ironic about it is that uh, my good friend Grayson Perry, when he did this uh, wonderful series for Channel 4 about Brexit, he spoke to both uh, Remainers and Leavers. And the irony was that the icons of what they believed in were almost identical. Yeah. So you'd think having that on the table, there would be some scope to come together. But I'm afraid, mm -hmm. sad to say, I think it's pretty unlikely. So when it comes to that question about what constitutes Britishness, I wonder if you are any the wiser now after looking at it for a very long time, and if so, if you could share what that It's very be. difficult to actually identify exactly what uh, constitutes Britishness. There's eccentricity, there's certain rituals and habits. Um, and as I go around the country, uh, I think the rise of English nationalism has had a big impact on this. And this is something I've noticed in the last decade or so. That, to me, is a slightly worrying aspect, and I think it's taken everyone by surprise, the strength of feeling about English nationalism. Do you also think it was to do with a kind of a lack of voice? So it's quite interesting to me that if you look at somewhere like Scotland, a very confident country with its own Scottish Parliament, you know, it feels like it has a stronger sense of identity. Do you think there was something there in England where we're still trying to work out what our identity is post-colonialism even? I think we're somewhat in crisis, and I think this is how it shows itself, and I think there's no doubt that that is the case, so yes. A and the other thing that's important is that, uh, as we all know, general elections are won with 20% of the voters. Uh, so you have the, uh, you know, the, the constituencies which return the same MPs time and time again, and uh, most of the people in these areas are actually from those where you almost feel there's no point in voting because we know the result before it's even happened. In this case, in fact, what you actually had was a first opportunity to you know, articulate this anger and to vote, and inevitably vote against establishment, vote against the Tory government, vote against David Cameron, and of course what they perceive to be the, the rules coming from Europe. I wonder whether some kind of reinvigoration of, of, of democracy m might be possible and might be a way forward. And I'm thinking about the fact that, for example, you know, the, the whole issue with the prorogation and the Supreme Court, whatever else that meant, it meant that. Um, that the, the, the spotlight now is on British democracy and the fact that you know, from time to time now we can hear the protests of, of climate protesters as they walk past us. There is this sense that maybe democracy can be reinvigorated and maybe Brexit was a lot about the state of our democracy. Well, I, I agree. I mean, I think um, PR, obviously, the introduction of that in some shape or form, even if it's a smaller one than, than say, the Irish system, would be a huge benefit to this country because you then wouldn't have that polarisation where basically you have these safe seats. So until there's that basic change and we have a better representation, a more democratic system, we're basically in trouble. But we still have British humour, you know, and wherever you go, that's the thing, and the banter I encounter, and the, the, you know, just going around talking to people. I'm still absolutely charmed by the, you know, the, the delights of meeting British people and what they got to say. It, you know, it, it's wonderful. I mean, that's why I love being a photographer. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know the, the next conversation. And having a camera with this excuse to go in anywhere brings you in contact with so many people, and, and they're always delightful.